America's introduction into World War II would begin with a horrific event that would stun the world. The day after Japan attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, the Japanese, with 129,400 soldiers and air support, began their invasion of the Philippine Islands. Within a month, the Japanese had captured the capital of Manila. What happened at the Battle of Bataan? How did over 100,000 American and Filipino soldiers and civilians become prisoners of war? What was the Bataan Death March? What was the prisoners' experience? Were any of them rescued in time? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, former soldier, Marine Corps scout sniper, history professor, historian and book author. And we will answer these questions and other issues on this segment of Forgotten History. On December 8, 1941, Major General Jonathan M. Wainwright commanded the North Luzon Force, comprising three reserve Filipino divisions and the 26th Cavalry Regiment, also known as the Filipino Scouts. The main force of Lieutenant General Masahiro Hama's 14th Army came ashore at Lingayen Gulf on the morning of December 22nd. The American and Filipinos, outgunned, outnumbered, and without air support, could not hold the beaches at Ling Lingayen Gulf. By the end of the day, the Japanese had secured most of their objectives and were advancing onto the Central Plain. Late on the afternoon of the 23rd, Wayne White telephoned General MacArthur's headquarters in Manila and informed him that any further defense of the Lingayen beaches was impractical. He requested and was given permission to withdraw behind the Agno River. Retreating from the Japanese Allied forces, he had withdrawn onto the Bataan Peninsula and Corregidor by January of 1942, where they defended the entrance to Manila Bay. This forced the American and Filipino defenders of Luzon to retreat to the Bataan Peninsula. For the next three months, the combined U.S.-Filipino Army held out despite a lack of naval and air support. In March, Wayne White was promoted to Lieutenant General and informed that reinforcements were coming, just hang on. That was a lie from General Douglas MacArthur just to give the men some hope and hopefully have them continue resisting to buy more time. Finally, on April 9th, out of ammunition and without resupply, and with his forces crippled by starvation and disease, U.S. General Edward King Jr. surrendered with his approximately 75,000 troops. Ironically, MacArthur decided to abandon his own plan for robust defense and evacuated President Manuel L. Quezon High Commissioner Francis B. Sayer, their families, and his own headquarters to Corregidor on the 24th. Brigadier General Richard J. Marshall remained behind in Manila as the Chief of Staff to close the headquarters and to supervise shipping of supplies and the evacuation of the remaining troops. On December 26th, Manila was officially declared an open city, and MacArthur's proclamation was published in the newspapers and broadcast over the radio. The Battle of Bataan proper lasted from January 7, 1942 until April 9th, when Major General Edward King Jr. surrendered his force to Colonel Mutu Nakayama, a regimental commander in the 14th Army. On April 9, 1942, U.S. and local forces surrendered, stunning the Japanese. Lieutenant General Masaharu Homa inherited twice as many captives as his reports had estimated, creating an enormous logistical challenge. There was no way he could transport over 78,000 prisoners, of which 12,800 were American servicemen, as well as the remaining starved, sick, and wounded prisoners and civilians, which numbered 38,000 who became prisoners as well. Colonel Nakayama wanted to move the prisoners and refugees to the north to get them out of the way of Homa's final assault on Corregidor, but there was simply not enough mechanized transport. As a result of these circumstances, the collective Filipino and American prisoners were soon rounded up by the Japanese. The men were divided into groups of approximately 100 men, and the march typically took each group around five days to complete. The prisoners started off from Marivelas on April 10th and Bagak on April 11th, converging in Pilar, Bataan, and heading north to the San Fernando Railhead. Initially, there were instances of kindness by Japanese officers and soldiers who spoke English such as the sharing of food and cigarettes and allowing for personal possessions to be kept. However, the horrors they were to soon experience would not be unique 
to the prisoners of war captured on Bataan. Japanese atrocities would become well known against other Allied soldiers, such as the British and Australians, after the fall of places such as Hong Kong, Singapore, and the invasions of Burma and Borneo, as well as New Guinea. Japanese mass murders against Korean and Chinese civilians were already coming to light. Mass shootings, bayoneting, and beheadings were the order of the day. However, despite the initial cordiality extended by the Japanese to the Americans and Filipinos, this congenial attitude rapidly changed. The prisoners soon became victims of unrelenting brutality, theft, and even knocking men's teeth out for their gold fillings. The Japanese had little respect for men who surrendered and did not fight to the death. The first atrocities are attributed to Colonel Masanobu Tsuji, when approximately 350 to 400 Filipino officers and NCOs were executed. This became known as the Pantangan River Massacre. Tsuji, in fact, disobeyed General Hama's wishes that the prisoners be transferred peaceably. Tsuji had actually issued orders to his officers to execute all of the prisoners in their custody. Although some Japanese officers ignored the orders and would not murder, others became active in murdering POWs. During the march, prisoners received little food or water, and many died from disease and exhaustion. Those not immediately executed were subjected to severe physical abuse, including beatings and torture. On the march, the sun treatment was a common form of torture. Prisoners were forced to sit in the blazing sunlight without head coverings. Anyone who asked for water or broke formation to drink from standing pools of water was shot dead or beheaded. Trucks drove over some of those who fell behind or succumbed to fatigue. Those prisoners too weak to continue were murdered. Many were randomly stabbed, bayonets beaten, or continuously beheaded. American Lieutenant Kermit Lay later recounted how this was done. Quote, It pulled us off into a rice paddy and began shaking us down. There were about a hundred of us, so it took time to get to all of us. Everyone had their pockets wrong side out and laid all their things out in front. They were taking jewelry and, and doing a lot of slapping. I laid out my New Testament. After the shakedown, the Japs took an officer and two enlisted men behind a rice shack and shot them. The men who had been next to them said that they had Japanese souvenirs and money on them. The exact figures of the murdered are unknown. Estimates are from 5,000 to 18,000 Filipino deaths and 500 to 650 American deaths during the march to the railway. Once the surviving prisoners arrived in Balanga, the overcrowded conditions and poor hygiene caused dysentery and other diseases to spread rapidly. The Japanese did not provide the prisoners with medical care. So U.S. medical personnel tended to the sick and wounded as best they could with few or no supplies. Upon arrival at the San Fernando Railhead, prisoners were stuffed into brutally hot metal box cars for the one-hour trip to Capas, where the outside temperature was 110 degrees Fahrenheit. The box car temperatures became ovens. At least 100 prisoners were pushed into each of the unventilated box cars, which had no sanitation facilities, and the dead amounted. When the train arrived at Capas train station, the survivors were forced to walk the final nine miles to Camp O'Donnell. Even after arriving at Camp O'Donnell, the survivors of the march continued to die at rates of up to several hundred per day, which amounted to a death toll of as many as 20,000 prisoners. The total distance of the march from Miravelles to San Fernando and from Capas to Camp O'Donnell is about 65 miles. It is believed that thousands more troops died because of the brutality of their captors, who starved and beat the marchers and bayoneted those too weak to walk. Survivors were taken by rail from San Fernando to prisoner of war camps, where thousands more died from more disease, mistreatment, and starvation. Most of the dead were buried in mass graves the Japanese had dug behind the barbed wire surrounding the compound. Of the estimated 78,000 POWs at the march, only 54,000 made it to Camp O'Donnell. Three American officers managed to escape during the march, and eventually, in January 1944, news of the march and the unmitigated savagery meted out to the prisoners became public knowledge in America. It was not until January 27, 1944, that the U.S. government informed the American public about the march, when it released sworn statements of military officers who had escaped. Shortly thereafter, the stories of these officers were featured in a Life magazine article the Bataan Death March and other Japanese actions incited intense hatred for Japan. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General George C. Marshall, made the following statement. These brutal reprisals upon helpless victims evidence the shallow advance from savagery which the Japanese people have made. 
We serve notice upon the Japanese military and political leaders, as well as the Japanese people, that the future of the Japanese race itself depends entirely and irrevocably upon their capacity to progress beyond their aboriginal barbaric instincts." End quote. Survivors of the Bataan Death March endured three and a half years of death camps, brutal labor, and unimaginable indignities and injury. More than half the Americans taken prisoner on Bataan died before the war ended. This was greater than the overall death rate for American POWs in Japan, which was 40%. It was more deadly to be a POW than it was to be a combat Marine in the Pacific. By comparison, the death rate for Americans taken prisoner by the Nazis was less than 2%. American forces invaded the island of Leyte in October of 1944. General Douglas MacArthur, who in 1942 had famously promised to return to the Philippines, made good on his word. In February 1945, U.S. Filipino forces recaptured the Bataan Peninsula and Manila was liberated in early March and prison camps were liberated. The few survivors were truly walking dead, malnourished, diseased, and unable to walk on their own, but they were alive. Lieutenant General Wainwright earned the respect of the men who were imprisoned with him. He always felt guilty about surrendering but he knew that he had no choice if he was to save as many men as possible. He had later received the Medal of Honor, which had first been proposed during his captivity in 1942, but was rejected by MacArthur, who was at the top of his chain of command, who felt that Corregidor should not have surrendered. This is an interesting position, considering that MacArthur bailed out on Wainwright and lied to him about sending support. He did witness the Japanese surrender aboard the USS Missouri on September 2, 1945, and he joined British Lieutenant General Arthur Percival and returned to the Philippines to receive the surrender of the Japanese commander, Lieutenant General Tomoyuki Yamashita. It was during this period that on September 5, 1945, Wainwright was given his fourth star. After the war, the U.S. Army conducted interviews with the survivors, including Wainwright, and drafted formal war crimes charges against specific Japanese officers. The American Military Tribunal during the Tokyo War Crimes Trials tried Lieutenant General Hama Masahuru, commander of the Japanese invasion forces in the Philippines. He was held responsible for the death march, a war crime, and was executed by firing squad in 1946. Two of his officers, Major General Yoshitaka Kawane and Colonel Kurotaro Hirano, were also tried by the United States Military Commissions for war crimes. They were sentenced to death on charges of failing to prevent their subordinates from committing war crimes. Homa was executed by firing squad on April 13, 1946, while Kawane and Hirano were sentenced to death by hanging and executed at Sugamo Prison in June of 1949. In an interesting twist, the Bataan Death March is also one of the few Japanese war crimes in which the Japanese government has made a specific effort to atone for. In 2009, the Japanese ambassador to the United States, Ichiro Fujisaki, offered his country's apologies. Fujisaki said, we extend a heartfelt apology for our country having caused tremendous damage and suffering to many people, including prisoners of war. The word hero is often thrown around a lot. I would like to thank these true heroes who endured so much, many until death, who served their country. Never forget them. We hope you enjoyed this segment of Forgotten History. Please click like and subscribe for free. And please stay tuned and be engaged and informed. Send us comments if you have questions or even show ideas. And we will respond to all requests and comments as soon as we can. Thank you.